Hello everyone and welcome back to the Bonsai Zone. This is part two of preparing my trees for our club fall show. When I left off in part one, I was working on my ficus microcarpa, applying moss to the base of the tree, and I was about to start pruning the top of the tree. I've been thinking a lot about this tree overnight, and I'm not sure it's strong enough to prune it already. Um, it was repotted this spring, so I think I've got to leave it a year and just let it grow to gain vigor and get the root base really established before I put it in a show. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to leave this tree just to grow this summer and it won't be a show tree for this year, but someday it will be. The next tree I'll be working on is my Austrian pine. I'll be doing some needle plucking up top in order to balance the vigor of the tree. The first thing I'm looking at on the tree is the profile of the tree. So I'm looking for any branches that are jutting out of the profile. So maybe here, that's uh, getting a little long. Over on this side, the profile kind of comes down fairly nicely. There's a shoot sticking out here, but I don't mind some variation in the profile. You don't want it like a, a pure curve, like an umbrella. You want some variation in it. So I don't think that one's too bad. I could prune the tip off and just shorten it a little bit. It would probably look a little better. Getting maybe a little long at the bottom down here. It's not too bad, but uh, maybe to kind of shorten it to about here. Austrian pines in nature, they, they don't really form a triangle like this. They're more of a ball shape. So if you imagine these two lower branches pruned back here, it makes it look more like a, uh, a tree you'd see in nature. So maybe I'll do that. Um, with the triangle shape, it looks very bonsai tree-ish. Um, looks like a classical bonsai tree. I, I you know, I, I like the natural look. I want my trees to look like miniature trees you'd see in nature. So I'm thinking, yeah, maybe I need to shorten those two lower branches so it doesn't look so spread out. So we'll, we'll look at that. Here's a close-up of that shoot that's sticking out. So I'm just gonna prune the tip off it. There's healthy needles going quite far back, but we'll go into about here. And take that tip off. When you're looking at the profile of the tree, you have to remember that bonsai is three-dimensional, so you have to look at it from all angles to see what's sticking out. So if I rotate the tree around, you can see I have some shoots sticking out from the back of the profile here. If these upper branches get too long, they start shading out the branches down below. So these branches will get weaker and the branches up in the sunlight will get stronger. So it's important to keep the profile in mind when you're pruning to shape. So I'm gonna come in here and take it off right here taking a fair amount off, but leaving, always leaving, some green healthy needles from this year's growth. Rotating the tree around slightly, I can see some more shoots that are overhanging the lower branches that need pruning. This is another vigorous shoot, so I'm gonna take it back fairly hard, cutting about half of the new growth off to about here. This will let a little more light in down below. The new shoots on pines always grow vertical in the springtime and then as the summer progresses the shoots go from vertical and they slowly go sideways like that. I wanted to shorten these lower branches a bit so I'll come in and take the tip off. Again leaving some green needles from this year's growth. I wanted to shorten the branch on the lower left side of the tree also so I'm going to take it back to about here. And I can take this back one back to about here also. And that gets that branch a little shorter. I do have lots of growth on the interior of this lower branch. So if I had to shorten it quite drastically, I could. I have lots of new shoots way back here that I could start growing the branch over if it starts to get way too long. 
there's the profile of the tree now. So very subtle changes, but slight improvements. That's what bonsai is all about. Next on this tree, I'll be doing needle plucking. I'll be removing more needles from the top of the tree and less from the bottom. This will balance the vigor of the tree. So the lower, weaker zones will have more foliage, so they'll get more energy to grow. The upper zones of the tree will have less needles, less foliage, less energy up top. So we're balancing it. They're normally strong up top and weak on the bottom. So we're taking vigor out of the top and keeping lots of vigor in the bottom of the tree. So when it grows in spring, everything comes out equally on the tree. So you don't get big long shoots growing out the top and very weak growth on the bottom. First thing I'll do is remove all the lower facing needles from the upper structure. You can remove the needles on a pine by plucking them. But if you do that, you have the danger of pulling out dormant buds with the needle cluster. So I prefer to go in with scissors and actually prune them close to the branch, leaving just a little bit of a stub. These little bits of needles that are left, they'll go brown and fall off quite quickly. As you start cleaning out needles, it gets easier to see what you're doing. There's less clutter. There's a shot of the tree with the lower needles removed from about the upper third of the tree. This tree already has good balance between the upper zones and the lower zones on the tree, so I don't think I need to do any more needle plucking. If I wanted to, I could remove all the old growth from the upper section of the tree and leave the bottom as it is if I wanted to further reduce the vigor at the top of the tree. But this tree is fairly balanced, so I'll leave it how it is. The moss looks really good on the tree right now, and if our club show was in a couple of days or a couple of weeks, I would leave it as it is, so it looks really natural. But because the club show is so far away, I'll need to prune the moss down. My first step will be getting the moss away from the root base of the tree, so bringing it back. I'll start by picking the moss away with my tweezers. You can see here it's starting to grow up the trunk. We don't want that. Again, if you leave this type of work till just before a show, your bark will be discolored down below here. And it just won't look very nice. Or your surface roots will be covered in moss, one of the two. These roots at the side of the trunk, the ones that come out, really contribute to the flare of the trunk at the root base. So it's really important visually to be able to see these roots. So the root base looks nice and wide and they go down nicely into the soil. If they're covered with moss, you're just not showing the potential that's there of your roots. So it affects the whole look of the tree if you can't see your roots nicely. So I'm going to come in now with the scissors and start pruning the moss shorter around the base of the roots here. All this moss will grow back in. So if you take too much off, it's no worries. When I'm working on the moss underneath the tree, even though this isn't a landscape penging or a bonsai landscape, I still like to think of the area on the surface of the pot as a landscape. So again, I imagine myself how big I am. I imagine myself standing beside a giant old tree. So when I'm working this moss, when I'm pruning it, I'm doing it to the scale that I imagine the tree to be. And I'm trying to make the best of this landscape to give the impression that this is a giant old tree. So even though, you know, it's not a landscape bonsai or landscape penching, you should treat all your surface area as a landscape. And it really adds to the look of your tree. I don't like the moss under a bonsai that looks like a patchwork quilt. It has, you know, clumps of light moss and lichen and too much variety. It, uh, 
it just distracts your eye from the tree. Um, moss isn't the focal point of your planting, it's the tree. So it should be there to explore and look at, but it shouldn't take over the, the planting and be the first thing you notice is all this bizarre patchwork of moss underneath the tree. You can put variety in it, but it's got to be subtle. One of the things I like about this tree is it's a peaceful tree. It's not contorted. It doesn't look like it's endured all kinds of hardships in nature. It just reminds me of a giant old tree that's maybe growing in a cemetery or in the middle of a forest somewhere. I think that peaceful feeling has been lost in a lot of bonsai trees. They try to be too dynamic and it's uh, you know it's a different look and there's a they look great but uh, there's a place for peaceful looking trees too. Ones that you just relax when you look at them and say oh it's just a nice big old tree. I think what I'm trying to say is that I'm not making the tree something it's not. I'm not bending twisted contorted branches or jacking the trunk into weird positions. The tree is what it is and I'm working with what I have. And I like to do that. I, uh, if a tree has a straight trunk, I go with it. I make it a straight trunk tree. There's plenty of trees in nature with straight trunks. It's very rare to see a tree that has a twisty trunk. So, you know, sometimes making a tree just look like a tree is what I'm trying to achieve. It's good enough. It's, uh, I don't have to make it look too twisted and tortured. I just want it to look like a tree. I've got the moss all pruned up now, so let's go in and have a look. It took me about half an hour to get the moss pruned up like this and a lot of people would say who's got the time to prune moss for half an hour? Well for me bonsai is about taking the time to do details like this. So I think the tree's looking really nice at the base now, looking nice and miniature. I'll give it a nice watering and put it back on the bench. The next tree I'll be working on is this tiny little jade tree. Today I'll be pruning back the top of the tree for further ramification and I'll be cleaning up the moss. My first step will be to prune back the new growth to the first set of leaves. This will make the tree more compact and make it more miniature looking. The tree has enough time before the fall show to generate new leaves up top and when they come out I'll remove all the older leaves so we just have the fresh new small leaves in at the top of the tree. Around the back of the tree you can see a big scar here where I removed a branch about this size and then I carved it flush with my fingernail and now it's healing over really nicely. I think in a couple of years you won't even be able to tell there was a branch there. It'll just be nice and smooth and the bark will match that of the tree. All these jade cuttings will root if you stick them in some fairly dry soil. Even if you stick a leaf in the soil it'll grow roots and form a new plant. The moss on this tree doesn't need a whole lot of work just needs a little bit of pruning and I want to get it away from the base of the trunk so it doesn't start growing up the trunk. A little root here I could remove at this front. I'm going to clean the moss away from the trunk now. I may repot this tree before the club show if I can find a nice pot. Um, I think a pot that matches the trunk color, so a, 
sort of a tan with maybe some brown flecks in it or would match the tree better. And I'm not real happy with the position of the tree in the pot. I think that could be changed a little bit also. So, But that'll be another video. You can see a bit of the root base now. We may want to expose that a little further in future. That's it for the little jade today, so on to the next tree. The next tree I'll be working on is my clump of cedars. There's five trees in this clump, all growing from the same root base. My first priority will be to get this root base cleaned up so we don't have moss growing up the trunk of the tree. After that, I'll prune the moss down. It'll be similar to the process on the Austrian pine, so I'll just come back when that's all done. I've got the landscape cleaned up now, so you can see all the roots nicely. I got the moss off the trunk of the tree. However, this one root is bothering me here. All the rest of the roots come from the trunk and flowed nicely down into the soil. And this root's sticking up in the air, and I don't like that. I think it spoils the look of a mature tree. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to try and get a nice flush cut here. So I'm going to come in with my pruners and off it goes. That looks good. I'll remove the rest of this root with some pruners that aren't so nice. I'll bring up my gold handled Fisker pruners and remove it from the soil. There we go. I'm going to come in now with the toothbrush and water and just spray the trunk and get rid of all this discoloration down low. That root also blocked the trunks behind it here, so I'm glad I got rid of it. It looks much better without it. And there is another root behind it here that flares in nicely to the ground, so. It's been really nice working on this tree. I really had the feeling that I was working in the shade of an old cedar tree. It's time now to go up and work on the top of the tree. Any of the branches that have grown really long, I can come in and cut them back in size. If I look at the tree from the side view, you can see there's not much foliage up front. All the foliage is behind the tree, and there's too much behind. So I want to reduce that foliage behind the tree to make it more balanced from the side view. I'm still looking at the side view. This is the back of the tree, so I can come in and reduce these shoots back in size. Always keeping some nice green foliage that's healthy on the branch of the tree. Some areas I can only prune a little bit off, and other areas a lot more. This is still the side view, so I've got the back pruned up as tight as I can get it for now. I've uh, made sure that the branches in the upper part aren't shading out the lower branches. So as this tree progresses in development, I'll be bringing this even tighter towards the trunks. I'm back to the front view now, just looking at the tree. As I've said before, observation is one of the most important tools in your bonsai toolbox. Looking at the tree and seeing what needs to be done before you actually do the work. So again for this tree, I want to be able to see those lower trunks more, where they fan out from the main tree. So I might have to do a little cleanup with the foliage there. There's a lot hanging down in front of the other trunks and that kind of thing. I could also bring the tree in a little more compact, I think. It's a little large still. It, it looks a little spreading for a cedar tree. I'll just work away at the tree slowly, pruning it up, keeping everything compact pruning back any new growth. Removing shoots that are growing in towards the trunk of the tree. 
I finished doing the pruning on the tree. I was surprised I could take quite a bit of foliage off actually. There was a lot of nice strong growth closer into the trunk of the tree. I cleaned up the apex a lot. I took a lot of crossing branches out. So I think it's starting to look more like a giant tree, less like a bush. Yeah, I'm happy with it. I think, uh, I think it'll uh, just get better this tree in future. Yeah, it's very, very nice. I, I really like it. I was also thinking of putting the Christmas cactus in the show and the tamarics. There's not much work to do on the tamarics. It's, uh, it's pretty well pruned up for now. So I think we'll just work on the Christmas cactus. We'll put the tamarics back on the bench. It's been growing very well since the last video and it's time to prune it up. This isn't a tree, but I want to prune it up into a tree-like form. So I'm going to reduce, start reducing the branches. So I'm pruning for ramification. So every time a leaflet comes out and doesn't divide into two, I prune it off. So hopefully I'll get two new shoots coming out. And that's what I've been doing to prune this tree. And it's been working quite well so far. My first big decision is this lower branch. I want to simplify it. I don't like all these multiple shoots coming out. So I think I'm going to take off this long straight part here. Let's try that. Like that. And then I don't want this branch coming forward. So I'm going to take it off here. That looks okay. I don't want this branch so long, so I'm going to cut it back to here. And I'll cut it back to here again. And I'm going to take that upper part off. Maybe even take it back further so it's not so significant. I think for the top, I'm going to try hedge type pruning and see what happens. So here I go. I've never really done this on a Christmas cactus before. So we'll see what happens to it. Move that hanging branch. This one also. There. I'll see how it reacts to the pruning on that. See what happens where the new branches and leaves develop. This one branch kind of goes behind here. I'm wondering if I should remove that. No. It's got a lot of foliage up top. I better keep it. Hopefully something will sprout out here and I can get this going in a better direction in the future. But for now, it is what it is. So that's pretty well it, working on my show trees, doing some pre-work, midsummer pre-work for a fall bonsai show. So now let's go to today's update. Today's update is my lemon tree bonsai. It was root pruned, repotted, defoliated on top, and branch pruned in the last video. Quite a severe operation. So I wanted to show you that it's alive and well, and already it needs more work to be done to it. The new leaves have grown in on the lemon tree, and there's quite a variation in size. It goes from you know, very vigorous shoots to some very small and weak shoots. So today I just want to prune it up to kind of equalize the balance. So I'll be pruning the vigorous shoots down harder and leaving the small ones alone. So here I go. I'm going to do directional pruning. So I, all my branches will keep fanning out from the center of the tree. So I want to prune just above a leaf that's facing towards the outside. So there's a good pair. Actually, there's a good pair right down low so I can take it right back here. To here. I'm leaving three leaves on the 
branch. I'll do the same here. I'll take it right back. This is a vigorous branch to there. The rest, this one's not so vigorous, so I'll just take the tip off. This one coming out front is also less vigorous, so I won't take as much off. I will take it off here. And then some of these, I'll just take the tip off. Just removing the little growing tip. And that's about it. I'm leaving these shoots, all the weakest ones, I'm not touching them at all. This time I remembered, I'm going to make some lemon tea from the leaves that I pruned off. There's a shot of the lemon tree, all pruned up and ready to grow again. So it's now time for today's viewer's picks. Today's viewer's picks are from Jeff in Sarnia, Ontario. He's got about 50 trees in various stages of development. So here's pictures of his Chinese elm, black olive, Japanese maple, silver maple, boxwood, ficus, hinoki cypress, and a hydrangea. So thanks, Jeff. That's all for today's pre-bonsai show prep part two. So Nigel Saunders in the bonsai zone. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.